Hey, what's up, everybody? So I know we've all been waiting for the roadmap. Back in December, ArenaNet indicated we'd be getting an update on quarter one plans and new End of Dragons content early this year. Well, we're coming to the end of January now, and unfortunately, we'll have to wait a little while longer, as they indicated on Twitter the other day that the 2023 roadmap will be coming in just a few weeks. Now, initially, not gonna lie, I got a bit sad. I guess it's kind of on me for setting my expectations a little too high. They did say early next year, which February technically falls into, I guess. But yeah, it did disappoint me a little bit, um, especially seeing as all these other games lately have been coming out with their roadmaps. World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online, New World, Hell, Disney Dreamlight Valley. But look, I get that it's hard to keep up in the current landscape of high budget live service games. And I mean, this is a roadmap for the entirety of of 2023, not just a quarter or two. So yeah, after chilling out for a bit, I came to terms with it. We just need to sit tight. The good news is they did sorta, kinda, tell us some of their plans for quarter one here. So let's talk about those. Yesterday, we got insight on some world versus world quality of life updates arriving on January 31st. Keep in mind though, that this is just the first world versus world update of many to come. This update includes new weekly achievements for eight gold and 35 extra skirmish tickets per week. Now, of course, this isn't enough to like completely revitalize the mode, but if you're not that active in world versus world, then this might be just enough to dip in for those bonus rewards each week, depending on how long those achievements take. They're also making improvements to siege equipment like flame rams and ballistae, giving them extra durability and extra damage. Uh, the damage on the war claw chain pull has also been doubled. They're reducing the supply limit on keeps and castles to speed up the sieges a little, and to compensate, they're making supply dolyaks more durable and also having them provide more supply on delivery. And with that, the supply from camps are also being increased. So admittedly, I am not a massive world versus world player, but these all seem like good changes, reducing the amount of stalemates and turtling defense gameplay that we see, uh, replacing it with more active sources of supply through defending dolyaks and camps. They do say there's of course more updates to come during the following months, clarifying that these updates intend on addressing player population, making world versus world more rewarding, which is the thing that I'm most excited about to be honest, and refining core world versus world systems. I suspect most of the meaty changes will be coming with the alliances update when that rolls around, which intends on converting world versus world from a server versus server situation into guilds versus guilds. A sort of guild war, if you will. Now also coming on January 31st, Jade bots will now be flyable in all five capital cities, not just at that one specific spot in Kaining City. This is a little weird. I mean, you might imagine that this means that you can now take cool screenshots of your character in all major cities by flying around in first person and no. Uh, if you're not sure how this works, you have to go up to a terminal to use the Jade bots and you also cannot zoom all the way in to first person. Uh, not to mention that your character is also stuck in front of the terminal. You can't move around or emote or anything like that. So even if you could go first person, you'd only be able to take pictures from this screen specific spot surrounded by other players in this exact same spot. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we get some extra changes to this to make the Jade Bot a proper camera tool. Otherwise, I really have no idea what the point of this is, unless it's just supposed to be used in future story episodes, which would make a lot of sense. I know the Jade Bot was never marketed as this sort of like camera thing, but for the most part, I found the Jade Bot to be really useless and giving it this extra functionality, being able to fly around as a camera, put filters on it, rotate it, use it for making videos as well. I, I just think there's a lot that could be done with the Jade Bot. So I really hope they're considering making some changes to it moving forward. On February 3rd, we're getting a preview of the next Guild Wars 2 balance update. Whether this is targeting PVP, World vs. World or PVE, we don't know. Uh, I'd wager PVE. My hope is that this update is focused on addressing some of the issues with supports right now. I did a video on this if you want to check it out. Basically, a lot of the supports feel quite spammy at the moment with a focus on mindlessly mashing your utility skills off cooldown to provide boons with 
very little flexibility. Hoping to see some improvements there with this balance patch, but we'll see. I think the last time we got a balance preview, uh, the actual patch dropped about a week or two after. So we can probably assume that the patch is dropping around the 14th of February. February 6th, we have the game's minimum requirements being adjusted to include DX11. So if you're still using an ancient PC, it's time to upgrade or be left behind. Now, if we're taking their few weeks away tweet, literally, then this would have the 2023 roadmap landing around the 17th of February-ish. This makes the most sense to me because just a week and a half after that is the one year anniversary of the End of Dragons expansion. My goodness. I have to imagine that they'd be using that week and a half to start ramping up hype and marketing for that new content. So yeah, fingers crossed. That would hopefully put the Living World update on the 28th of February. I hope it's no later than that. Um, I will be surprised and sad if this doesn't happen. <laughs> they did post a teaser image of the roadmap. Here it is. At first glance, not a lot to gain from that. But if you crank up the contrast and expose the text, you get... There's nothing here. Stop looking. Do you really think we'd leave this part visible? Secrets. Uh, yeah, you know what? Fair game, ArenaNet. Uh, not gonna lie, this was pretty funny. So yeah, it's been a while since we've gotten some new content in Guild Wars 2. We had the finale of the return of Living World Season 1 back in November last year, and even that wasn't technically brand new, but there's no doubt that it took a fair chunk of manpower to reproduce. We did get a brand new strike with that final episode, along with all sorts of cool rewards. We did get the challenge mode versions of each of the End of Dragon strikes, uh, with the Harvest Temple challenge mode being undoubtedly the toughest content the game has ever seen. We got the legendary weapon variants and, and many, many balance updates. I talk all about Guild Wars 2 in 2022 in this video. I think we can all agree that Living World Season 1 needed to come back, but this has definitely put the game in a weird position. End of Dragons was an excellent expansion that capped off the major story arc for Guild Wars 2 with a solid framework for PvE content moving forward, leading us all to ask, what comes next? Where will we be going? What's the new story arc? Are raids coming back? New fractals? New strikes? We don't even know if it'll be called Living World since they seem to be intentionally avoiding that name. I do wish ArenaNet wasn't so cagey about their upcoming plans for the game. I mean, we know literally nothing about what's coming next other than it being set in Cantha, which makes it very difficult to get hyped. You know, at least up to the End of Dragons launch, we had countless live streams and trailers. We have none of that here, even though there seems to have been so much development time on this new season. And if the roadmap was so far out anyway, why not just say something earlier? Uh, yeah, I, I guess this impatience is just me obsessing over Guild Wars 2 because I love the game and I just want more reason to play it. So yeah, we probably just need to take this opportunity to chill out, play other things. I'm sure most of our questions will be answered with the roadmap dropping mid-February. Sniff the subscribe button if you want to see more Guild Wars 2 content. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.